Hey, welcome to the Black Spruce Knitting Podcast. Um, my name is Allie. I live in Vermont in the United States um, on Abenaki land with my partner Chris and our dog Darwin. Um, and this is episode seven. Um, before I jump in, I wanted to say welcome to the new subscribers. Um, I know that a lot of people have recently found my podcast through the Crea Bea Knitting Podcast. Um, and I was very excited. <laughs> I think my heart skipped a little beat when I was watching it and I got a shout out. Um, if you haven't seen that podcast, you should definitely check it out. It's fantastic. Rebecca, who makes it, lives in um, London. She's Scottish. I think she's moving back to Scotland. And her projects are incredibly inspiring. Um, she often uses really well-priced yarn. And she's doing this cabled piece right now that I'm like, I want to make that. It's a test knit, so sorry, Nordland. So I might wait till, I'm gonna wait till it comes out, but I think it's definitely on my list. Um, another podcast I wanted to mention, cause I know some people found me a couple weeks ago through the Brook Willow um, podcast, which is Anna, who is in Minnesota. And um, again, if you haven't seen it, you might really like it. Um, Anna is also an incredible knitter and she's been doing vlogs recently where she sort of takes um, takes us around throughout her day and they're very beautifully shot but she's also talking about the projects that she's working on and what she's designing. She's making these colorwork socks right now that are gorgeous. Um, she's also doing this huge calf, calf? Um, calf, calf facet jacket. It's incredible. Um, it's this like beautiful colorwork jacket. And yeah, I also find her podcast lovely. Um, so if you need something to watch and you haven't seen those, uh, I'll put the links below. Um, if you found this podcast through those, welcome. I'm so glad that you're here. So today I'm going to talk about a couple finished objects, one work in progress. Um, then I have a couple acquisitions um, and then I'll talk a little bit about some life stuff. So. This might be a long episode, I'm not sure. I feel like every time I film, my episodes get a little bit longer. Um, I'll try not to ramble on too much. Um, but also, oh yeah, happy Hanukkah. Tonight is the third night of Hanukkah, it's November 30th. Um, but I'll talk a little bit more about Hanukkah later with my works in progress and also um, acquisitions and life stuff. Um, I'm Jewish. Um, I think I've said that before, but my family celebrates Hanukkah. Um, I'll talk a little bit about Christmas too, because I do celebrate Christmas now, um, because Chris does, um, which is exciting <laughs> for me. So I am going to just jump in now to some finished objects. The first finished object I have is what I'm wearing, and this was a test knit. This was the Asteria. I'm gonna like, I'll put in some footage. This was the Asteria um, sweater by Rachel Ramo, who is Maven Crafted, um, like on Ravelry and Instagram. And this is, I started writing notes down for these episodes, so I'm going to keep this around so that I don't forget to say anything. So this sweater is knit in, um, Erin Moore Light by The Fiber Company. Um, this was my first time using yarn from The Fiber Company. It's a brown tweed yarn that's made in Ireland. The color is Kieran. And I looked up how much it cost because I was curious. It's $23 a ball, which I think is expensive. $23 US. Um, here, I have some leftovers actually. This is how much <laughs> I have left over. $23 a ball and I used like I would say about two and a half. I need to weigh it to get the exact yardage for the test knit which is due tomorrow. Um, but so I think that's expensive although because it's more than 300 yards per skein um, you do get some bang for your buck. Um, but it's a gorgeous yarn. It's 80% wool, 10% cashmere, and 10% silk and it's very soft and light. It's very like um it's a two ply, but it's a pretty fragile yarn, I think because it's woolen spun, although I blocked this last night. And first of all, it dried very quickly. And second of all, um, it bloomed and kind of filled in. It's a DK weight. 
um, but it's very light. Like this isn't a heavy sweater. So I love this yarn. I find it to be really soft. I'm excited to see how it wears. Um, I think I had mentioned in my last episode that I chose to knit this pattern in a non-superwash yarn because I thought I would wear it more. Um, although it seems like it was maybe written for a superwash yarn, but I think it looks really nice in the non-superwash yarn. Um, so I'm glad with my decision. I was trying to decide while I was knitting this, like what sort of style it feels like to me. And then today I was looking at it and it hit me that it, I feel like it kind of has like a 90s sort of like witchy, especially because of the sleeve shape, um, like a witchy vibe, um, which I can definitely kind of rock with. So I'm happy with how it came out. Um, the sweater itself, I'm wearing it over just like a green dress today. <clears throat> it has no shaping in the body or the sleeves. It's this like very wide rib, um, which actually sort of adds some shaping. Um, the hems are all um, garter stitch hems. It's got a deep V. There are a couple different options too. Like you can do it cropped or you can do it long. I chose the cropped option. Um, you also can make the back a V or you can make the back straight across and I chose to make the back straight across. Um, so it's customizable. There's a split hem, which I chose to make even. It was written to be an uneven hem, but I just decided that I preferred it even. Um, I knit this on, this is the 45 inch size. So a little bit of ease for my 41, 41 and a half inch bust. Um, although because it's ribbed, it does like pull in a little bit more. Um, I knit it with size six needles, which was a called for size. Um, yeah, I really love the way that it turned out in this rustic yarn. It definitely, it's like something about the witchy, so like the no sleeve shaping, plus the garter stitch edging kind of gives the sleeves this like fun bell shape. I've never knit anything like this. It's not, it's not like a super complicated sweater, but I just don't have anything like it. And yeah, I don't know. It, <laughs> it reminds me of like, um, like a 90s teen TV show, I guess. I don't know. So I'm really happy with it. Um, I loved knitting it. You know, it was ribbed, but it wasn't hard on my wrists. I actually started to develop a little bit of carpal tunnel. Um, and I have been resting. I knit part of this in Continental. I usually knit English style, but Continental gives my right wrist a break. Um, and I've been wearing wrist braces and doing a lot of exercises. So I'm taking care of my wrists. And I feel like they healed while I was knitting this, honestly, because it's not very much purling. And it just was just a lot more gentle on my wrists. Um, it was a really quick knit. I was resting while I was knitting it and I still managed to finish it pretty quickly. I also, I said that I was gonna knit this monogamously and I didn't, which I will talk about in a minute, but it was fast, um, probably especially because I made it cropped. It's knit bottom up. You do a three needle bind off at the top and then knit the sleeves. Um, yeah, it's just like a cute pattern. I think it looks lovely in a hand dyed yarn, but I was just so pleased with the way that it came out in this tweed. I think it's the first tweedy garment that I have. Um, and I think it will be just like a lovely kind of throw on sweater. I'm trying to think, that was everything that I had written in my notes. Um, yeah, I mean, I wasn't sure about a lot of parts of it. Like I've never done a garter stitch edge before, but I think that for this piece, it's just perfect. Um, I love the yarn so much that I was like, I wish I could make something else out of this. I don't think it's enough, but it will go into another project, like a scrappy project at some point. So yeah, the Asteria sweater by Rachel Ramo. I think the pattern is going to be released soon. Um, you should definitely check out what the other testers have made because it looks gorgeous in a lot of different yarns. Um, and it doesn't, the yardage requirements, I think I must have used like probably like 800 yards. So it feels like it would be good if you have kind of a small amount of a DK yarn. One thing that I do want to mention is that I don't have very many garments that have like kind of a deep V-neck because I have um, a scar because when I was 25, I had cancer and I did chemotherapy. And so I have a scar from having a port, which is like 
um, a thing that they sort of put in you to make it easier to put chemo into your blood. Um, and I don't usually wear anything low cut because I, I don't know why anyone, like most people probably wouldn't see that scar and think that it's a port scar, but I, it feels really vulnerable to me. Um, it feels a little vulnerable to talk about it right now. And I don't know if anyone wants to hear about it, so I won't talk um, too much, maybe at another point in time. Um, I usually think about it a lot during my birthday, which is sort of coming up. But I think that it's good for me to embrace the scars and embrace these things as being part of my story. Um, which makes me think about my last podcast. Thank you for all the lovely comments. I'm trying to be a little gentler on myself about mistakes. I think mistakes, mistakes, scars, I think it's all kind of part of life. So yeah, maybe it's good to have, I mean, I could wear it with like a higher shirt, but I kind of like how it looks with this like um, green dress. Um, again, it's that kind of like 90s, little witchy, that cool, that cool 90s girl vibe, I think. <laughs> um, so yeah, maybe it's sort of nice to have more um, pieces with a v-neck. I don't know. Um, yeah. So I was knitting this and I needed to knit something else while I was making it. I really wanted to switch back and forth. Um, I will say I really liked doing a test knit. I don't think Oh, hello. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to do another test knit for a while just because I have so many things that I want to make. Um, I definitely eventually want to do some more test knits, but I thought, I think that like knitting on a deadline for me, I like to jump back and forth between projects. So I might not do another test knit for some time, um, but eventually I'm sure I'll do more. Um, it was a cool process to be like this is you know to be picking a yarn without being able to look at other people's photos to be trying something out um the pattern is extremely well written um it's so clear it's I just would really recommend it I'm actually thinking about knitting some of her other patterns now but I did want to knit something else while I was making it and so I cast on for a cowl which I finished it's a little bit damp it's a little damp because I blocked it last night and this dried and this didn't. Probably because it's thicker because it's a brioche cowl. And this is the DK Brioche Bandana Cowl by Lavanya Patricella. Um, it was my first brioche project, believe it or not. I saw everyone knitting Shawlography by Stephen West and I was like, I want to try brioche. I was going to do a color work cowl and then I just, I found this and it seemed great. Um, I'm going to put it on. This cowl is actually, it's very simple. Um, first time knitting brioche, I made a couple mistakes. I didn't worry about them too much. I don't know how to fix brioche yet. I can fix um, regular knitting, but I didn't worry about the mistakes. Like here, <laughs> lost it and then added it back. <laughs> Whatever. Um, working on not worrying about mistakes too much and just enjoying the process. Um, it was so fun to knit. I really liked knitting brioche. It wasn't very difficult. This pattern is also very well written. If you know how to knit brioche, you might not need a pattern for something like this, but um, I found it to be very helpful. But this is a very special piece to me because of the yarn. So there are two different types of yarn. I have a little bit of both left. This one was the first hand spun that I did on the wheel that my friend Audrey's mother, Becca, gave me. Um, and it's a three ply. It's blue face luster wool that was dyed in Vermont by Fragis Fibers in the Colorway Cathedral. Um, and I was really happy. I will say that I think I love spinning bright colors, which I don't always um, knit or wear. <laughs> um, this was really fun to spin. The colors are a little bright for me, but I realized that it would pair perfectly with this Harrisville Nightshades that Chris gave me for my birthday last year. 
and I think this is the color Last Call. Nightshades is a black yarn. Can't really get the color. Let's see. Hmm. It's not. Hmm. Harrisville's Harrisville Nightshades is a black yarn that has little flecks of other colors in it to sort of give it a tinge. And this color is Last Call, and it's got you can't quite see, but it's got little flecks of blue. It's a little bit better. I'm having trouble getting the color. I have another skein of this in Fever Dream, which is flecks of pink. And I have enough of this left over to do a hat where I think I'm going to do this as the brim and this as the rest. When Chris gave this to me, I was it was really special. I didn't ask for it. I think Chris had sort of seen me like looking at the website and then went and ordered it. Um, and Harrisville is a mill that I would consider local to me. It's like a two hour drive away. It's one state over. Um, I want to go soon. But I was like, this yarn is so special. I have to find the perfect pattern. I agonized about finding a pattern. And then it just sort of worked out perfectly. And then I can put these two together for a hat. And I think that the nightshades look so fun next to each other because you really get the sense of the tinge. Um, so this will be a hat for me probably soon. And this is a DK weight yarn. I think this is heavier than a DK. I think it's probably like a worsted or maybe even an Aran and it's got my hair in it, sorry. Um, but it worked out. Um, it was fine for this bandana. And bandana cowl. And yeah, this was super quick. Um, this is what it looks like on the inside. I think that the Harrisville Nightshades works so nicely with this um, hand spun because it's called Cathedral and I just feel like it looks like a stained glass window. I did a fractal spin so I really split the colors up because I didn't want it to be too stripey and I feel like it was very successful. Um, it's very squishy. I think it's going to be super warm. Um, again, I just blocked it so it's a little bit damp and it probably will be a little less big. <laughs> I think the colors are a little different than what I would usually go for, but I just, oh, I think it's going to be so gorgeous to wear. And I don't have that many hand knit cowls. I have a couple shawls, but I actually find that I wear cowls more often because when I am need my neck protected, it's usually because I'm like skiing or out walking um, with Darwin or like doing something outside where like I don't want something that's like big around my neck like I want something that's just gonna sit there and stay there um I think I love looking at shawls but I wear cowls more often I'm sure I'm going to knit many more shawls but this was just a great project I'm trying to think of what else to say both yarns are non-superwash um the Harrisville bloomed a little bit when I blocked it which is nice I don't know I just like those colors they're so pretty I can't get enough yeah I'm looking at it right now and I'm like oh I see so many mistakes and I'm just practicing like feeling okay with it um so this was joyful to knit I knit it while I was knitting the Asteria I got this done because it's due tomorrow. I have to take some photos, but yeah, I don't know. Successful. Um, knitting has been really joyful lately and I'm really appreciating that. So that's my other finished object. I have one work in progress. So this yarn is from Maven Crafted. I ordered this last year. Um, the person who designed the Asteria sweater um, she's Jewish like me and so she was selling Hanukkah yarn and I bought a sock set last year. It's just a 7525 um, merino, superwash merino and nylon and I was gonna knit myself some Hanukkah socks. Oh that's so funny. My brother is calling me right now and these are for him. I'm gonna call him back after this because um, I just want to finish it. Um, I was gonna knit myself some socks and then I was like okay I need to make something for my brother. He lives in Los Angeles. He's a couple years older than me and he has enormous feet. <laughs> He's tall. His feet, he told me are size like 12 and a half or 13. So I am feeling a little nervous about the size. These are just vanilla socks. But luckily my friend Caleb, 
who is here more frequently has similarly sized feet so I can get him to try them on and I did he tried them on and I think they're gonna work um for my brother but this is these are my Hanukkah socks <laughs> they're Hanukkah colors that's what I meant to say before I got distracted and I do have there's a little mini that I'm using the colors are latka and heirloom Latkes are the potato pancakes that are deep fried in oil that we eat on Hanukkah since we're celebrating oil. We eat lots of oily foods. Um, if you've never had a latka, you should try it because they're delicious. Um, and I just, I will say, so I cast on 72 stitches. These are size one needles. I like to knit my socks two at a time. I just pull from both sides of the yarn cake and I love the way that it's striping. It's almost perfect. It's not, you know, there's some rows where there's some overlap, but with the 72 stitches for my brother's size 12 and a half, 13 feet, it's striping like perfectly. So even though I wanted to knit these for myself, I'm glad that I'm knitting them for my brother. Um, and I'm hoping I probably will have enough yarn left over to do a little shorty sock for myself. Um, since I, I mean, I think my feet are kind of big, but they're not as big as his. So I think because the striping is so lovely, I'm going to do an afterthought heel, which I've never done before. Um, but I'm going to try it and see how it goes. Um, and then get Caleb to test the fit. And then my brother is going to be here around Christmas time so I can give them to him. He knows that I'm making him socks, but I haven't knit him anything since I was like 14. So I think it'll be nice. Um, the person, Rachel, who design, who made this yarn and designed this pattern, she does like everything. She makes notions. Her stuff is all really cool. And for me, it was exciting to see Hanukkah themed stuff because most stuff is Christmas themed. Um, so I'm glad I bought this last year. I'm glad I'm using it. I'm definitely going to have these done by the time my brother is in town. Um, and I think it will be really nice to give it to him. He's been a great brother. I have a lot of people who are wonderful in my life. I'm very lucky. <laughs> um, yeah, so Hanukkah socks. I need to call him. We've been playing phone tag for a few days. So that's it for um, finished objects and works in progress. Because I just finished this, I'm casting on a sweater for my dad. I'm gonna make the Gustan sweater by Ann Bud with my other sweater quantity of Crimson Co. Um, it's funny, it's sort of similar to this sweater because it has a garter stitch edging. And I was thinking about replacing it with a rib, but I think I'm gonna keep it as garter stitch. Um, but I'm gonna make that for my dad. Um, and then next year, I'm definitely gonna make a sweater for my mom. I'm trying to, I have a lot of people who I wanna knit for, but I also wanna make some stuff for myself too. Um, but I think I'll start those projects a little later. I think the one for my dad is going to be really fun to knit. So I'm looking forward to making it. I do have some acquisitions to share. Um, if you're interested in seeing them. Um, and if not, I understand. I am trying to be really thoughtful about what yarn I purchased. Just because I think that I really like when I can buy yarn for a pattern rather than have the yarn and then figure out what pattern because I just stress so much about like finding the perfect pattern for yarn so it's easier for me to go the other way so I'm gonna try to work through all the sweater quantities I have including that one for my dad I now have three sweater quantities because I got more um and um yeah I feel good I've actually worked through a lot of my stash this year um, I'm finding homes for everything. It's sort of fun doing it that way too. But I did get more yarn. <laughs> I ordered this a while ago and I mentioned it last time. Um, I ordered my first ever Newtodin yarn. Um, a lot of people are probably familiar with Newtodin. It's a Swedish unspun pencil roving. And so what that means is that there's no twist in it. It's very 
I don't want to say fragile because I've seen it knitted up um and I think it makes like a beautiful fabric although I've heard that you have to be careful when you're knitting with it um but I ordered this a couple weeks ago um and I couldn't decide what color to get because all of the colors were so gorgeous and I thought well what do I love to wear and I love to wear gray and I love to wear green so I got this color which is called Dvala I want you to be able to see it but I don't know it's so hard to capture I've seen people on other podcasts saying that it's hard to capture and it really is it's like a frosty green it's got green and this light gray and little bits of like orange rust like I feel like I can like <laughs> oh you're never gonna be able to see that do you see what I mean it's like orange rust and then like brown and darker and I believe that this color Dvala means dormant and it does remind me of tree like evergreen trees or shrubs being coated in frost and I think oh my gosh it feels so lovely I got 600 grams which might be more than I need but I'll use I wanted to get it to make sure I had enough because I'm hoping to make kind of an oversized sweater I'm thinking about I think it's called the Verpal by Albiona but I might have the name wrong but I will put a picture I'm thinking about that um just something cozy and lovely and oh my gosh it's just soft and kind of magical which is what I had heard and you know I think I actually thought for I think I spent like $120 US on all of this 600 grams plus shipping from Sweden which is a lot of money um but it's really special um and I know that once they do a colorway, they don't do it again. And I just was like, oh, they had this icy blue gray that was lovely that I really wanted. They had this beautiful brown rust and this white color with like, oh, this like creamy white. But I just, I know that I'll wear this all the time. I wear gray and green like almost every day. So it's actually sort of similar to the dress I'm wearing. Hmm. So yeah, I'm very excited about this. I probably won't start this sweater until like February. So I have a little time to think about what pattern I'll do and it will be something to indulge in during like the late winter because I find those late winter months to be difficult. It's like the excitement of the holidays are past, um, but it's just continues to be cold and snowy. So that is my plan for this. I like have in my head when I want to knit which project, like, I have that special yarn from Maine and I'm going to start that project I think on my birthday in January. Um, so yeah, that was my yarn purchase. But because it's Hanukkah, I did get some gifts. Um, it's in this. Because my family celebrates Hanukkah, I did get a couple gifts. Um, my family asked me what I wanted and I said no yarn this year just because I am trying to knit my way through my stash. Um, I'm still knitting some of the yarn that I got for the holidays and my birthday last year. Um, and so I said no yarn, but I asked for like books and magazines related to knitting and also fiber to spin um, because I don't have any fiber in my stash. And I think that one of my goals next year is to spin yarn and then knit a sweater. Um, not like an expert spinner, but I feel like I could do it and it would be a great learning experience. So I got two different, um, two different like sets of fiber, but like hand painted fiber, but in large enough quantities for, um, to make like a big garment out of instead of using for like a smaller color work piece. Um, and so the first one I got was that I got three braids Three braids from em Emily C. Gillies, who is a dyer in Canada, of this Rambouillet. Is that how you say that sheep breed? This Ram, this beautiful Rambouillet. Oh my gosh. I like want to cry because I think it's so gorgeous. This colorway is called Epilogue. And it's like, oh my gosh, this like tealy green, this pink. And so something I've been thinking about with my spinning is that I like to spin really bright colors, but then I don't always like to knit or wear. So I thought I should 
try to get for these bigger projects colors that I would really want to like knit and wear and this hits it for me the like kind of more muted I just think it's so gorgeous um I really would like to join this person's like fiber club I don't know I think that Emily's like a genius with with um hand dyed fiber colors so this though, I want to, oh, I didn't even notice that this yarn, there's like a little, or sorry, this fiber, there's like a little red, red. Oh, so I got three of these. These are each four ounces. I don't know if it will be enough for a sweater. It definitely would be enough for like a shawl. I think that what I want to try to do is split these braids up by color and then kind of spin it into like a very long fade so that it would be like a gradient. Um, instead of spinning all of the colors together. Do I know how to do that yet? No. <laughs> Will I figure it out? Hopefully. So that's my plan for these. Ah, oh, I love them and they're so soft. I've never spun Rambier. I just, oh my gosh. I don't know, these colors are killing me. I've been experimenting with dyeing my own. I also really like being able to support hand dyers when I can. So I'm really excited to spin that. And then I got a lot of, let me take it out. Ooh, oh no. I got a lot of this. This, I have six four ounce, um, so like a pound and a half of this fiber, which is Blueface Lester from Three Waters Farm in the colorway Cloaked and Shadow. And it is beautiful purples, um, greeny yellows, black, brown, purples and green are like my colors for sure. And I just think this is gorgeous. And I have a ton of this. So this, my hope is to spin this into a sweater. And for this, I am going to let all of the colors mix up. I'm not going to try to do like, um, striping or anything. Um, so I'll do a fractal spin, which is when you spin it so that the colors kind of repeat a little bit more randomly. Um, spinning is fascinating. There's lots of different ways to spin things for different effects. I'm such a beginner, I'm just learning. Um, but I'm excited that I have a ton of this because also like it is expensive and I wouldn't necessarily want to buy a ton of hand-painted roving. So I was really, really grateful to receive this as a gift. Um, my birthday's coming up, but like, I feel like I have everything I need right now. I'm very lucky. Um, maybe some gift cards for like local mills so that next year when I'm ready to buy more yarn for sweaters, I could get like, I really want to knit a sweater out of yarn from Green Mountain Spinnery, which is a local mill. I definitely want to try more Harrisville yarns other than the nightshades. Um, I know that their dyer, um, one of their like main dyers was hit by Hurricane Ida and so isn't dying. And so I think that they're kind of backlogged on like backordered on yarn. Um, but I also want to go to Harrisville. Harrisville and Green Mountain Spinnery are both about two hours from me. And then there's another mill called Junction Fiber Mill, which is new. It's a small mill that's about an hour from me. It's close to where my parents live. Um, and I also, I just, next year, I have some spinning projects that I'm not going to show you because, um, I don't know. I just, <laughs> I'm, I'm still learning <laughs> and there were dying projects too, and I'm not 100% happy with the dying, but I think that next year, some of my goals are to be able to um, spin and knit a sweater and to knit a lot of local yarns. So those are my acquisitions. Um, I do have an advent calendar from Melanie, Big Little Yarn Company, who's a dyer based out of Japan. It's themed around yokai, which are like creatures from folklore, which is very cool. So I'm excited to start opening that tomorrow. I do think that I'm gonna try to make a garment with it. Um, I'm looking at some of Amba O'Brien's um, advent garments. Um, there's like a cardigan that I think would be really cool. And then maybe try to use the scraps for like a granny square or like a granny, I don't know how to crochet really, but I wanna learn so I can make that granny stripe blanket. Um, but yeah, I'm trying really hard to knit my way through my stash. Um, so that's what I have. I'm trying not to 
buy too much right now. Um, just because I like, I want to enjoy what I have. So some life stuff. Um, I don't have too much to talk about. Um, we were supposed to go to the Ski Racing World Cup last weekend, but it was cancelled. We got all the way there and they were like, it's cancelled due to weather. It was too windy and the visibility was poor, so it was dangerous, which was too bad, but it was okay. I ended up having a nice day with my family and some friends. Um, it is about to be December. It's about to be Christmas time. I grew up not celebrating Christmas. <laughs> um, I love how much other people love Christmas, but in our family, we just didn't do it. Um, I do celebrate Christmas now and I have, this will be my fifth Christmas because since I have started dating Chris, we've been together for almost five years. And since we started dating, we celebrate together. Um, and we usually go see Chris's family in Massachusetts, which is lovely because they love like showing me Christmas and spoiling me. Um, <laughs> But I definitely have a different relationship to Christmas than a lot of people do. Um, we are going to decorate our house this week. I think we're going to go to get a tree from a tree farm that's down the road um, and decorate and do some gift giving on Christmas as well. Um, but it just wasn't what my family did growing up. We did kind of the stereotypical Jewish thing where we had like get Chinese food and go see a movie on Christmas. <laughs> um, which was also really fun. And I, it's like, I want everyone to love it and I want everyone to have a wonderful time, but I just have a different relationship to the holiday, um, which is okay. You know, like people are all, we all have different cultures and different backgrounds. Um, but that does mean that I probably won't do, maybe I'll do some Christmassy things on this channel. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna do Vlogmas, when people do like those daily vlogs, I might try doing one or two. Um, but yeah, it's definitely a different experience for me than it is for a lot of people. And I was watching Knit Two Together, which is Maria and um, her partner's new podcast. And she was mentioning that like, this time of year is hard for a lot of people. And it is hard. It can be really, really happy and it can be really, really hard, especially when we've had grief and loss. I feel like the holidays make loss much more difficult. Um, so with that in mind, I'm trying to just like, I don't know, be gentle with myself, be gentle with everyone else. Um, uh, yeah, it's important to me to just like, I don't know, I want to send, I like, I want to put love out into the world. Um, I feel very grateful. <laughs> um, I'm so happy to be alive. I hope I get to be alive for a very, very long time. So yeah, that's life stuff. Um, maybe I'll have some more interesting things in my next episode to talk about with my life. Um, and maybe I'll make a little vlog. If that would be interesting to you, please let me know. Um, let me know if there's anything that you would like to see from this channel. Like if you want to see a mill field trip, since I do live close to some very cool mills, um, let me know and I'll maybe I'll try to do some filming. If you are interested in like my make nine, I have sort of some knitting goals for next year. Um, they're very loose. I don't really like hold myself to goals. Um, but if you want to know sort of like what's inspiring me for next year, let me know. And I'd love to hear, I always love to hear from you what you're making, what you're thinking. You feel like letting me know what you're feeling excited about this month or just what you're feeling like this month, um, please leave a comment. I like to think that we can all hold everything together. You know, like we can hold the easy things and the hard things all together. Um, I really appreciate all of you and I appreciate... Um, getting to know people through this and just your comments and I don't know, everything. So sending some love out to you. Um, I hope that you're having a pleasant transition into winter um, or summer. <laughs> I always am thinking that there's some people in the Southern Hemisphere. Like, is there anything else? I don't think so. Take care.